Good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to the sports segment of the weekend show. My name is Odiri Akpan. I always like to start the show with an inspirational quote, and today we go straight to the tables of Shelly Ann Fraser Price. She's the current four time world champion in the women's 100 meters, and today she says, I don't want any, I don't pay attention to any records, I don't want pressure, I just want to get to that line. Now, the line she's talking about is the finish line, okay? That is a secret ingredient to her success. Four 100 meters world championship medals. Great job, Shelly Ann Fraser Price. She's also a mother. Yes, and uh, she brought her son to the to the IAAF uh, World Championships 2019, where she won her fourth 100 meters medal. Now, let's go straight into the show proper. Now, we're starting on a sad note, because this week, news filtered in from the USA that um, USL player and Nigeria international Isaac Promise has passed on. He died in his apartment gym uh, on Wednesday night, according to his club, Austin Bold FC. Now, the NFF did tweet about it. He says, we are sad to hear of the sudden demise of former at NG Super Eagles forward Isaac Promise. Promise was captain of the Beijing Olympics Eagle squad that won silver. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this time. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. Okay, now more tweets followed because Austin Bolt also went on Twitter to tweet about the loss of their striker in that one. And also we saw a tweet from his former Turkish club, Antelia Laspo, Antelia Laspo, yes, on his demise. Now Austin Bolt FC tweeted, uh, Austin Bolt FC is heartbroken by the death of Isaac Promise, who passed away on Wednesday night. Promise, um, we see, rest in peace, they say. Now, um, we also saw uh, a tweet from Antalaya Well, He played for several clubs in Turkey, but we just picked this one from at Antalaya Well, It's in Turkish, so I really can't read that, but it says, rest in peace, Isaac. So, um, Nigerian football family and Nigerian football stakeholders and just everyday regular Nigerians, our hearts and prayers are with the family as we pray that God grants them the fortitude to bear this loss. Moving away from the sad story, let's go straight to the one that most Nigerians didn't like at all. It was a bad day for Nigerians on Wednesday, Thursday, because after the demise of Isaac Promise, the, um, the news came out that Tammy Abraham and Fikai Otomari, Nigerian players of Nigerian descent, but also um, eligible to play for the England national team, were called up by the England national team head coach to the Three Lions for their Euro 2020 qualifiers uh, coming up uh, in October. That's the next week, maybe the 13th or so, or the 11th. Now, um, on Twitter, it went, uh, well, Twitter totally went berserk. And um, let's go back to the former tweet. Uh, we'll start with that one. And yes, at Omoisi, uh, at underscore Omoisi said, Dear England, Please, free Bukayo Saka, Tomori, and Tammy Abraham for Nigeria. Let us not fight. Three of you should, three of you two should use your brain and play for, Ni and play for Nigeria. Signed, patient Nigerians. That prayer did not work because two of them have been invited to, uh, of course, the national team, uh, except uh, Bukayo Saka. Let's go to the next one. And Azadi underscore Nomso says, Fashionu Agbalaho Jordan eBay and co-opted um, to play for England instead of Nigeria, and it ended in tears. Would have been nice to see Tomori and Abraham play for Nigeria, but they chose England, and we wish them good luck. We move regardless. And also, we see a picture of the England uh, squad uh, with the uh, manager, Gary Southgate, in the background there. And at Mr. Puka, Mr. Underscore Puka says, Tomori and Abraham just made a bad choice. Same route Gabriel Agbonlaho took. Hashtag England, um, England. I don't know what he meant, but England NG or something. Okay, so uh, straight to the next um, one. Uh, let's see. I honestly think Tammy Abraham and Fikai Otomari should go ahead and play for England. England gave them resources to build themselves. Super Eagles or Nigeria didn't. Go to public school fields in Nigeria. You will see players equally good waiting for call up. Simple. This message was sent to uh, sent on Twitter by at Smith Vinci, the kingmaker, he says. Okay, so um, I don't know if that is, um, uh, we have some more tweets to go through. Admazi underscore do says, congrats to Tammy Abraham and Fikai Otemari to be included in the England squad. Short story. Keep your head in the game. Every day, grind in the hustle. Soon your time will come and you would be announced to the world. Hashtag three liars. So sometimes you get um, inspirational uh, messages for the guys backing them, saying go and fight on in the world. And sometimes you see disappointed Nigerians that they've lost out on the opportunity of seeing these guys play for the Super Eagles. Atosin Sports says, so Nigerians are angry that Tam Tammy Abraham and Fikai Otomari chose to play for England's senior team, who raised them through the youth ranks with money generated by their football association. 
These guys are not Nigerians. And I find popping on foreigners to save our super eagles. <laughs> okay, I will see a picture of the players there. Okay, so wrapping up right here from this one, let's go straight to another story that did, um, um, of course, get to our attention. This one at um, I Slim Feet says that Tomori and Abraham have both opted to play for England instead of Nigeria. Why do we keep losing young talents to England in football? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, at the writing DJ says, English FA picks Tammy Abraham and Tomori drops Dele Ali. NFA, but why? English FA says, hit Colorado, two Nigerians are better than one. And NFA cocks the gun <laughs> in that one. So let's move away from, of course, the Abraham stories. They have been trending. Let's go straight to what happened this week with the FIFA Player Status Committee. Now, you remember the sad story of uh, Emiliano Salah, the 28-year-old Argentine who signed for Cardiff City in January, but died in a plane crash some days later? Yes. Now, um, the, the, the sign-on fee, the transfer fee for that, um, for Emiliano Salah was £15 million. Pounds. Okay, and there was a way the payment was supposed to come on. It was instrumental. Now, um, the player died two days after Cardiff City had announced that they've signed him. That was on the 19th of January. Now, after this whole saga and everything, Cardiff City had refused to pay Nons the first installment of 6 million euros and Nons dragged Cardiff City to the FIFA Status Players Committee or Player Status Committee. And um, when they got there, the Status Committee came out with a decision ordering Cardiff City to pay Nons the €6 million Euros first instalment of the £15 million pounds transfer fee. The problem is Cardiff City didn't like the decision and they said they were going to appeal to the Court of Arbitration for um, sports. The problem, uh, the, the, the real issue in this particular matter is Cardiff City says, yes, they agreed they signed the player, but there were some... Um, Clauses in the contract that the Premier League frowned on. The clauses were put in by non that the players, former club, and the, um, the Premier League didn't like it, and they had to review the contract and draw up a new one. Now, the old one was signed by Salah. The new one hadn't been reviewed and signed by Salah. So he was not yet a registered Premier League player, but according to Nantes, he was already a Cardiff City player. Now, that is the gray area we're talking about. That's why Cardiff City thinks they could win it in the Court of Arbitration for Sport. I personally feel the least you could have done is go to Cardiff City, have a sit down, go to Nantes, I beg your pardon, have a sit down and offer them at least 10 million pounds from the 15 million and tell them the player lost, uh, we, we lost the player, I, I don't have value for my money, so I'll just give you a little. Because the truth is, Salah had no business going to Cardiff City or getting on a flight to Cardiff City if he was a bona fide nonce player. He had no business doing that, they were not on break. So those are the gray areas that they need to hash out because we need to make sure that there's goodwill and good faith in football and, of course, the business side of football. Now, let's move away from, uh, of course, uh, Cardiff, uh, Cardiff City and Emiliano Salah. There were matches played during the week and there were goals scored. Okay, I can't take you through all the Champions League highlights and all that, but I can get you in on the highlights, like the goals of the week. Now, today's lineup has two Nigerians, Samuel Chukwezi of Villarreal, and, of course, we have Jamile Collins from Paderborn. Let's take a look. <laughs> Corner for Paderborn. Oh, what a strike! What a strike indeed from Jamila Collins. My goodness, he hit that well. Here for Kulusevski. Verdi trying to track back. Slip through for Cornelius. And Palmer equalized right on the stroke of half time. In the third minute, is he rounded off the routes deep into stoppage time? Keeping tabs on Nigerian players right here, of course, on the weekend show on the sports segment. Let's take a look at the fixture of the matches that will be played today. English Premier League comes up first. We see West Ham United against Crystal Palace at 5.30 p.m. That will be the last kickoff for today. But first up, though, it's Brighton and Hove Albion taking on Tottenham Hotspur at 12.30 today. Early kickoff in the English Premier League tomorrow. We'll see Manchester City take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. It promises to, a, to be a super Sunday tomorrow. Arsenal will take on Bournemouth. And later on tomorrow... At 4.30, Newcastle United will take on Manchester United. Away from the English Premier League, we're going to the German Bundesliga. Bayern Munich will be in action at 2.30 today against Hoffenheim. Borussia Dortmund are playing away to SC Freiburg. And on Sunday, we see Wolfsburg taking on FC Union Berlin at 2.30 tomorrow. Also, uh, Entrant Frankfurt will be up against a wider 
Bremen. Let's take a look at uh, other fixtures in uh, other leagues. Here are we see on Sunday that's where the big teams will be playing. Atlanta taking on Lecce, and we see Torino up against Napoli at 5 p.m. on Sunday. Inter Milan will be taking on Juventus uh, on Sunday in the Italian Serie A. So let's go to. Um, the, do we do the La Liga right now, the Spanish La Liga, or the French Liga? Yeah, the French, Spanish La Liga. Real Madrid against Granada today, 3 o'clock. That's the time for that game. Valencia takes on Alaves at 5.30. Also tomorrow, Be Barcelona takes on Sevilla at 8 p.m. Um, in the, Sp the Spanish La Liga. In the French League, all we see PSG will be in action also against uh, Angers at 4.30. Uh, that is today. And we see also big other big games in this French Ligue 1 so against Nice at 7 p.m. tomorrow. We'll see Lille taking on names on Sunday. Let's take a look at, um, we're done with the fixtures. Let's go to the match of the week. It's from the Italian Serie A today. And it's Inter Milan against Juventus. That promises to be a cracker, a big one uh, for both sides. Um, Inter Milan are back. I don't know, I may be back and better, but they're trying to get back in the top three and, of course, compete favorably in the UEFA Champions League. Now, Inter Milan against Juventus, it is um, Antonio Conte up against Mauricio Sarri. Let's take a look at the records between these two teams. The stats, they have both played 58 matches apiece, 12 wins for Inter Milan. Not so good compared to 27 wins for Juventus. And um, we see, uh, of course, 12 losses so far for Juventus. This doesn't look like a game that Juventus is willing to lose, but Inter Milan are playing at home. I don't know how that pans out, but let's take a, look, uh, take a look at the strikers. Key players for this game, Inter Milan will have Romelu Lukaku filing out for them in this particular game. He has played six matches, 452 ma minutes of play this season so far. He has scored three goals. Same also with Cristiano Ronaldo, but he has played five matches, 450 minutes, and also scored three goals. So good one for them. Let's see how this pans out. It is a fight um, when it comes to the attacking side. we we'll see if Ronaldo can outsmart. Lukaku and his defenders in Inter Milan when he's playing away from home. But let's go straight away from there. The IAAF is also, uh, was also in action. It's still on. That's the 2019 IAAF World Athletics Championship Doha 2019. Uh, let's take a look at the medals table first before we take a look at the highlights. Now, currently in the medals table, we have African countries doing us proud in the 2019 IAAF World Athletics Championship. United States are number one with nine gold, nine silver, and three bronze medals to so have 21 medals in total. China has three gold, three silver, three bronze medals. They have nine medals in total, but Kenya are toured with three gold, two bronze medals to give them five medals in total. Jamaica are four, two gold, three bronze, and two bronze medals. Um, Great Britain, they are fifth, two gold, one silver, and no bronze medal. They have three medals in total. Now Japan is sixth, and Ethiopia comes up at seven, top seven in the medals table, on the medals table in the Athletics Championship. One, one gold medal for Ethiopia. Let's take a look at the highlights uh, of the World Athletics Championships. This is the men's 200 meters World Championship final. What a race in prospect. As the lights return, the reality dawns. He's leaving it late. He's under pressure. Now he's coming through. He's got all the talent in the world, and now he's got the gold medal to match. 19.82. He thought he would go faster. He Never have we seen a build-up to a men's 100-meter final quite like this. Sam. We are away first time. Coleman got a solid start, but not a spectacular one, but he's into his running now. Gavin's trying to go with him, but it's going to be Coleman's night here in the night sky of Doha. He's in a class of his own. The women's 100 metres world championship final. It's a clean start, there's a roar from the crowd. Shelly Ann Fraser Price gets a good start. Dina Asher Smith going well. Fraser Price is going to get there. What a performance. Fraser Price and it's silver for Dina Asher Smith. Another gold. Her legacy as one of the all time greats is surely complete. So, while other countries have seen success at the World Athletics Championships in 2019, currently going on, um, Nigeria has had a lot of drama. Okay? 
trust me, there's a lot of drama for Team Nigeria at the tournament. But notwithstanding, right now, I wrap it up on the show. We started with Shelly and Fraser Prize. We're ending with Shelly and Fraser Prize. But it's the most you can take on the sports segment of the weekend show. We'll be back here again next week to give you more on the in the world of sports and football. But right now, I have to say my goodbyes and hand you straight back to Osasu Igbenedion and Andy Madaki. Oh, Osasu Anthony Joshua. Sorry.